Our topic for today is owner's responsibilities. So when you have a project, there are some things that are the responsibilities of the owner and therefore he should supply it to you. The first responsibility is you must provide all the information that is necessary for the project. And of course, that includes delicate matter like, for example, budget. It is not embarrassing to ask the owner how much is the budget for the project. In fact, it is the responsibility of the architect to determine right at the start how much is the budget because in actual practice of the profession, cost is always a determinant in the design of the project. Uh, in fact, it has a bigger implication when designing the project because space is related with cost. Let us say uh, for a for a simple house, it might cost the owner um, around 25,000 pesos per square meter right now. And for houses with a little high-end finishes, the price may increase to 30,000 pesos per square meter. So we don't waste space because space means cost. Space means money to the owner. So all the information that you need for the project, the owner has the responsibility to provide it. Another responsibility is when the owner is very busy, he must appoint a representative on his behalf who has the power to act, to make decisions, to decide on matters that are necessary so that the project will proceed. Because if the owner is very busy and the meeting is always being canceled or postponed, that means to say that it is causing delay already in the project, then that means loss of money for the architect. Because instead of completing the project and getting paid, you have to wait for the availability of the owner. In that instance, then the owner should appoint his representative so as not to delay the project. Delay in project means loss of money for the architect. Third responsibility is the owner must render decision as soon as possible to all the documents being submitted by the architect so that there will be no delay in the work of the architect. And during construction, it is the responsibility of the owner to issue order only through the architect. When the owner has an order for the general contractor, it must pass through the architect. That is the procedure in practice. As you can see, class item 6.2 and item 6.3 are related. They are time bound. They are they have something to do with time because as much as possible, we do not want delay in our project. Item 6.4 means that the, it is the responsibility of the owner to provide the architect with a certified survey of the site. So this is what we call the lot plan. Okay. And the geodetic engineer is a professional authorized under the law to create, to make a lot plan. He must sign it. 
although we are trained in the school, we are taught how to plot lots given the distance and the bearing and based on the transfer certificate title, legally we cannot sign those lot plans. We cannot, you know, plot them in the paper, in the tracing paper, and then have it blueprinted and then sign it. But of course, in in making a design, normally if there is in the absence of a lot plan, we request a TCT from the owner and based on the technical description on the TCT, we plot the lot. I do that so that I can start with my with a scheme. In the absence of a lot plan preferred by a geodetic engineer. You may assist the owner because uh, you might not know any geodetic engineer. So usually the architect is a geodetic engineer because of her practice. So in my case, my brother-in-law is a geodetic engineer. So I often refer my client to him. But because of the survey and the plotting, the preparation of the lot plan is to the owner okay because the the detective engineer will be the one to sign the last plan okay other things that are the responsibility of the owner soil investigation is okay this one is very important there are instances when a soil investigation or soil test is necessary to determine the actual soil bearing capacity. And under the law, all buildings, three story of height, should submit soil tests. So the cost of the soil test should be borne by the owner. It is quite expensive. So if you get to place this in the contract, you might shoulder the cost of the soil test. By the way, class, this owner's responsibilities, this lease is always included in the owner architect agreement. Item 6.5, it is the responsibility of the owner to promptly pay for all the architectural and other engineering and allied services required for the project. Okay, for example, uh, the owner decided to hire an acoustic engineer if, for example, the project is designed of a music room, chatter room, or other structures where the quality of sound is necessary. Well, the architect can provide the acoustic services necessary or he may or the owner may get his own acoustic engineer to the architect and it is the responsibility of the owner to pay the acoustic engineer and the architect like this for rendering acoustic services. Remember class, acoustic design services are not included under regular design services. And that is also related with item 6.6, .6, when there are specialists being used in the project or necessary in the project, like for example, in addition to acoustic, communication, electronic, and for, or for example, uh, lighting is specialist, it's the responsibility of the owner to pay for the professional fee of those designers. If there are also item 6.7 means, if there are legal, auditing, insurance, counseling, and other services that might be needed for the project, it is the responsibility of the owner to secure or to look for the professionals who will conduct it 
but we may always assist the owner in doing so and pay for the corresponding professional fees. Item 6.8 states that it is the responsibility of the owner to pay for all the reimbursable expenses incurred in the project. Under Section 7, it is entitled Other Conditions on Services. So after this slide, in the next slide, we will be discussing those items under other conditions on services. So the architect in carrying out his responsibilities may incur expenses. And these expenses should be reimbursed by the owner to the architect. It is also the responsibility of the owner to inform the architect immediately if he knows that the project might be delayed or, for example, uh, there might be some problems related to the project. He should not be hiding information or details that have uh, relevance or that have effect on the successful implementation of the project. Example, if the owner knows that the source of fund, for example, uh, he would just borrow from an institution, from a lending institution, like a bank, for example, if he knows that the release of the fund would be delayed, then the architect must immediately uh, be advised so that the architect can make necessary adjustments not only in the project but in his other projects also. Article 7, which is about other conditions on services, refer to our cover items like, for example, conditions for the architect's fee and other services. The architect's fee is based on the project construction cost, where the architect has to render additional services, additional compensation shall be required. So in the owner architect agreement, we always specify the scope of work of the architect under the regular design services. So if there are other related works but are not included anymore in the scope of services, the architect should always be paid additional compensation. Like for example, if he is tasked to do landscaping design works, then that is another service that the architect provides and that is not included in the regular design services. And so therefore he is entitled to a professional fee for rendering landscaping design services. Other services. Sometimes class there are projects that require other services. Like for example, I'll give you an example. When Teta designed a restaurant or not not a big restaurant but it's just a sort of a small uh, fast food but it's independent from any other it's not i mean to say it's not in the mall it has its own location it has its own space it is separated from other stalls in the building in her design there is in one of the walls, uh, there is a mural, okay? The design of that mural is not included in the interior design fee of architect Teta. But the owner requested her to do the mural, to do the design. And so therefore, Teta did, but at an additional cost to the client. So there are really services that may be required in the project that are not 
included under the regular design services. And so this must be an additional compensation to the client. Another, for example, scale models. There are projects that would necessitate the production of scale models, like, for example, condominium projects. These condominium projects are being sold to the public, even if the building has not yet been constructed or neither has the construction started already. And so, therefore, scale models are necessary to sell the units. And normally, we find these models in the malls, in the hallway, right? And so, the preparation of the scale model is not actually part of the regular design services of the architect. But the architect may prepare scale models upon the request of the owner, but at an extra cost to the owner. Other things that the owner may require may be walkthrough presentations or 3D models. And so those are not included, preparation of those items are not included under the regular design services. And the architect should be paid separately for preparing those items. For time and traveling expenses. Sometimes the client would request from the architect other works related but not included in the regular design services. For example, uh, in my case, a client at one time when I was designing his house requested me if I could accompany him in a furniture shop somewhere in Pampanga where customized furniture are being in produced and he wanted me to select a design for a for pieces of furniture for their living room. Aside from that, he wanted to show me second hand pieces of building components like for example main door and other furniture in a furniture shop also in Pampanga. And lastly, he wanted me to see the ceiling of Mimosa, of a restaurant in Mimosa, also in Clark, because he wanted that ceiling to be used in the design of the ceiling of the dining area of the house that I was designing. And so I agreed to the client. And so we went to Pampanga. First, we dropped by at the manufacturing shop. And I selected the design of the furniture and even the fabric. Everything that is necessary, I selected. And then we went to the second half store, second hand furniture store, and I rejected everything that he previously selected. So I went inside the van immediately, fearing for my life. Of course, that's a joke. But you know, class, uh, I don't have penchant for using second hand items in the house, in the houses that I designed. I have this notion that I'm designing you a new house and then suddenly you'll be putting second-hand pieces. So I just feel so, I uh, find it awkward. So, and another thing, I'm not really fond of those heavily designed wooden pieces of furniture. That is the reason why I rejected everything he selected. And then we proceeded to Mimosa. And he showed me where we had a buffet and then he showed me the ceiling and unfortunately the design of the ceiling does not fit 
fit into the design of his house. And so again, I rejected it because his lot is long and narrow. It's just like a train. The design of the house looks like a train. Okay. And the ceiling that he preferred to be used for his house that fit for a long and narrow house. The more the house will look narrower. The house will look narrower. And so I rejected it. And before we go back to Manila, he made a special request if we could drop by even for just a few minutes at Pure Gold because uh, it's just a waste of, you know, you are already waste of time if you will just, you're already in Pampanga and then you will not drop by at Pure Gold. So there is the there was the opportunity and so I said, yeah, I could spare a little time because I have some design works to do and I go back to Manila. So yes, for a few minutes. And so I agreed and then I did a little shopping. And when I was about to pay those goods, the owner offered to pay and so, uh, it would embarrass the owner if I would reject the offer. And so I said, yes, okay, thank you. That's it. And then by the way, class on, on instances like this, the cost of transportation is also to the owner. Normally the owner provides the transportation if he's not coming with the architect. In my case, I was picked up from my house and also I was dropped by at my house. And before I alighted the van, I was handed a white envelope containing my professional fee for accompanying the owner to those places and doing architectural works. So we call that per dime. Okay, that is just... Uh, one of those activities that I perform for a client. In another instance, I was requested by a client to accompany her to SM North, which is near my place, only to find a lighting fixture for her stairway because she wanted something, but she's afraid that it might not fit in the design. So even if the place even if SM North is near my place, the client must pay me also because I will be spending time and I will be using my talent to select the lighting fixture necessary for her because that is not included anymore in my regular design services. Item 7.5 is all about extra sets of contract documents. So under the law or on, in our practice, we are required to provide client, the client with seven sets of contract documents. But there are instances when the client would request for additional ones. So in any, any blueprints in excess of five sets should be chargeable to the owner. During those days, a uh, blueprint costs about 10 pesos per sheet. I don't know now how much now, how much does it cost nowadays. So since one, one set would consist of about 10 sheets, then that would be around 100 pesos, is that right? 100 pesos per set. But if the client would request for around five sets, then that means to say 500 pesos. So you have to charge the client for those extra sets of contract documents. In one instance class, when I got tired of giving the client those blueprints that he was requesting, I gave the original drawing because uh, 
he requested several times. I just wish that he requested it uh, all in time, all at one time, instead of requesting every other day. So I just gave the original drawing and never got it back anymore. Changes ordered by the owner. Sometimes, uh, actually not sometimes, but more often uh, the owner would request changes in the design of the architect. And the changes may entail extra charges also on the part of the architect, depending on the nature of the changes being ordered by the owner. If the changes would only have architectural effect, then the architect may, may not charge the client anymore, depending again on the extent of the changes being required. If it will require really several hours of doing the work, then the architect should charge the owner. At one time, I am already done with the structural drawings when the owner told me that he wanted to add an additional floor. But I said that would entail uh, extra structural expenses because the engineer has submitted already to me his structural design and in fact the structural drawings are already completed. So the owner agreed to pay again but only the structural cost, the cost of the structural design and the uh, AutoCAD and the cost of doing the drafting work again of the structural drawings. Work suspended or abandoned. If the work of the architect is abandoned or suspended in whole or in part, then the architect is entitled to a compensation equivalent to the extent of work he has completed already at the time the owner decided to suspend or abandon the work. Like for example, uh, in one of my projects, I was about to start the design when the client called me up asking whether have I done have done the design already because she wanted to change the lot instead of instead of building a house in Bulacan, she wanted the house to be built in a lot in Antipolo. Not really Antipolo, but near Antipolo. I forgot the exact place. Just right after SM Marikina, there are subdivisions over there. But anyway, uh, lucky for her because I have not started any work. I was just about to start the design. Not, uh, not any single line has been drawn. So in that instance, I did not charge the client any single centavo but in another instance class i have already finished the architectural drawings i have already done the floor plans the four elevations and two sections and i was about to prepare the perspective when the client requested for a meeting and she told me that she, they changed their mind. Instead of building a house, they would buy the lot near their place because it was being sold. So they decided to postpone the construction house and use their money to buy that lot. And they are willing to pay me for what I have completed already. So immediately I went to the place because a client is just my neighbor. Lucky for me, I have completed already those architectural drawings. So I showed them the, I brought the tracing paper 
papers and showed them the drawings that I have done. And they asked me how much would be the cost of those uh, drawings. And I told them that those are already architectural drawings. I'm almost done. The only lacking document is the perspective. But the architectural drawings comprise a bigger portion of the architect's fee. That's about 50% already of my professional fee. So I was charging the client at the time. I forgot already, but something like 80,000. And uh, so that's about 40,000 pesos minus the down payment I received. I think I receive only 5,000 pesos. I really cannot recall the exact amount. And so the client immediately handed to me in cash the 35,000 pesos and I went home very happy. And upon seeing my children, uh, you know, I spread the 35,000 pesos like a fan, yeah, in my hand. And I started, I started, you know, fanning. And pinumpay pay ko yung pera. And uh, my kids were astonished. Where did you get that? Lots of money, mommy. You were just doing drawing. You were just drawing a while ago. How come you got that much money? Oh, I was not drawing. I was making money, guys. And so this is already my earnings from drawing. Anyway, so that's it. You charge the client an amount equivalent to the work you have already completed at the time she at the time the client asked for the suspension or abandonment of the project another thing when the owner fails to implement the plans and documents for construction as prepared the architect the architect is also entitled to receive as compensation the sum corresponding to 90% of the architect's fee. That means to say, for example, uh, we are now on the construction phase. Okay, So uh, during construction phase, the architect has to do some works. Like, for example, visiting the job site, finding out if there are errors in the construction, finding out if the project is on time, things like that, checking the materials being used and the workmanship. I have already discussed this in my previous lectures. However, if, for example, the client decided not to push to anymore with the construction, then the architect should be compensated again to an amount equivalent to 90% of the architect's fee because the 10% would be the fee correspond to the construction phase. Different periods of construction 7.8 as I have pointed out several times any delay in the carrying out of the project would mean loss of money for the architect. Uh, we have such thing as cost of money. So the cost of money uh, gets, uh, it becomes uh, smaller as time goes by. So what you can buy today may not be as many as when you will buy it a year from now. The reason why you are charging the client extra, extra money or extra payment every time there would be delay in our work. For example, during construction, the project is being delayed several times and so the construction period is being extended and so therefore the instead of the architect collecting his professional fee immediately the collection is being also postponed because the 
the work is not yet completed. And so therefore the architect must be paid extra. The uh, practice requires that when the suspension of the construction exceeds six months, our fee for the remaining work should be doubled. That is the requirement. 